Hello! Hi! Welcome back to a new sketchbook. This is sketchbook number eight because I just finished another sketchbook. If you go on my channel, it's the video that's posted literally right after this was finishing it. So, of course, I had to start a new one because um, I still want to keep, you know, working in sketchbooks and stuff. That sounded very awkward. But um, I wanted to talk about some interesting things about using this sketchbook. And first, I'm going to mention, though, that I started this Saturday of last week, and I ended my my seventh sketchbook the Friday. So I literally waited one day, uploaded, deleted the rest of the stuff after I realized all the, like, footage and stuff was uploaded, so I still had space. And then I recorded and did all the editing and stuff, and now we are doing the voiceover. So I've had a lot of time to draw in here, and I've I've been because that's what a sketchbook is for. And I can tell you right away that the paper quality in the sketchbook is absolutely flawless. Well, not flawless, but like absolutely incredible. I've not had any complaints so far. I've used crayons. I used a little bit of colored pencil and then I've used markers and they've all done really, really well. My pencil has like not smudged very much. You know, you always get a little bit of smudging because of graphite, but like out of like a 100% ratio, it's like 98 no smudge, which is super good, but that's just my own like, um, my own viewing of it. I'm not exactly sure what brand the sketchbook is, but I will probably leave a little picture of it right here and also um, the like, <laughs> it didn't have a name when I, really got it it did but i ended up throwing away that sticker but i will just put a picture up and um yeah so the paper quality is amazing in this and i also wanted to talk about the cover art so because it was a new sketchbook there's always the first cover pressure and usually i do not draw on the any other pages until the first page is done and the cover of the sketchbook is decorated. So here I'm gonna pop up a picture of the decorated sketchbook and that's what it looks like right now. And I loved the sketch for this and I love the actual like inking. I love the front page of the sketchbook. I think it turned out amazing and it signifies like how I kind of define my art style right now. So I, before I started the sketchbook, I decided to spend like all of Saturday before nighttime, which it was probably like two in the morning when I recorded the actual recording. It's like 10, 20 right now, like PM, not AM. Uh, <laughs> but um, I remember I waited and I was like, decided to fidget around with my style as much as I could before I started the sketchbook because we had to go to my grandparents' house the very next day. So I wanted a sketchbook to take with me. I didn't really end up using it like at all because the ride down was really bumpy and it just didn't really make the sketches look good. But when I came back home, I started drawing in it more. And that's when I realized that like, holy crap, this paper is like absolute great quality. It holds markers really well. It makes my markers like pop really well. And it is not like the last paper where if you use markers on it, it like bled everywhere. And it all is really settling quite well, which is great because I really wanted a sketchbook with good quality. And I'm telling you, like literally my last sketchbook came from, I think it was in a, no, it's not an artist's loft, but I've had better sketchbooks that were from artist loft than the last one I had because the paper was smeary, all the markers bled and just things look generally really bad on it. And um, I got that one at like Hobby Lobby. So I'm taking a note for later that I do not want to buy sketchbooks from Hobby Lobby, but I will buy, I will start buying them from Barnes and Nobles because that is where this sketchbook came from. And I really, really like this sketchbook a lot. So one thing I, I really regret about the piece that I wanted to inform you about, and it's like the one thing I would change is the way that the left leg is positioned. I wanted her to look like that she's kind of either walking or running or jogging or whatever. She's like 
she's just doing that motion, coming toward you, kind of like, hi, like a little passing by. I'm not sure how the ne the last picture will end up, but it will probably be a goodbye page just because that's how I like to draw them right now. And I decided that I was totally going to go for the whole mascot sketchbook piece. So behind this picture, I stopped drawing on the very first page behind it so that it didn't get ruined. So instead, I just make a large collage behind it, and it's got like a neat little collage of the character and stuff. I never gave the character a name. I just designed her based off what I really liked to draw at the time and just the character that I wanted to draw. I thought it would be neat to go with a more watermelon themed sketchbook, although the stickers really don't read watermelon to me. They sometimes do, but more from a distance. It reads more green to me than it does watermelon, but I, I still really love the cover and I've been like experimenting with backgrounds and such like that and yeah, it's all fun, good and game kind of stuff. So I kind of accidentally made a like three color challenge without having, like I chose the colors myself, but I decided a very simple color palette for the character would fit very well for the first page. One thing I do wish I did was figure out how to use that random blank empty page right to the bottom right corner. I've considered putting a sticker or something there, but I, I just feel like it would ruin the page because I don't really have as many watermelon themed stickers as I thought I might have, but I still really enjoy the sketchbook. I also decided to do another sticker page because I really liked filling in the stickers on the inside rather than what I did with my fifth sketchbook where I just sporadically covered it with stickers and it looked really, really, really bad. Oh, that was my sixth, not my fifth, sorry. Th this is my fifth, this is my sixth. You haven't seen them yet, they'll be coming soon because I just toured my fourth. I'm just, I'm just like shamefully plugging all of my like future content when I don't need to because it's not created yet. I hope to create all of those. But yeah, I, I decided that I like just kind of collecting stickers and then putting them all in one go so that every time I take my sketchbook anywhere and there's a sticker I want, no matter how ugly the sticker is, I'll just like put it on the inside cover instead. Oh yeah, so I was cleaning up the line art right here and just erasing any little bits that I totally forgot about or just realized, you know, hey, I'm not gonna leave them just because the camera can't see them. I do delete and edit out all of the actual erasing because I started, when I originally started, I would erase on camera and it made the camera super shaky. And I was like, you know, people might get nauseous off that. So I started editing it out. I think I, I don't think I have a video where I like erase much beside like a little bit, but I did give a little warning, you know, hey, shaky camera, it's about to get shaky. Um, because I don't want someone to look at it and then like, you know, they're super hyper nauseous to that stuff to like watch it and then throw up or something. But like, um, I started now just taking the whole thing off of the desk and then just erasing it. And then I will like look at my camera, line it back up. And then I will like edit all those frames out to the point where the sketchbook is in a very nice, um, position. But I decided to keep this tiny bit in just so that you could see what I'm using. And this sketchbook and this eraser should be sold together. They work so well together. This eraser has erased so many little mistakes that I didn't mean to place there or like, you know, base guidelines or something. And it like, they just work so well to like, together because the paper is like just so perfectly right for this eraser. I like if you see this one, I think it's like the artist tri tip eraser or something. If you see this and then you have like a sketchbook from this brand, you should get that eraser because it works so well with this sketchbook. I I cannot even like explain how well it works with this sketchbook. Like I, I do a lot a lot of pencil sketches because that's just preferably my favorite medium. It's not my favorite medium. Pens are my favorite medium. I just happen to use pencil a lot more. So an eraser like this, like, um, tri-tip eraser is absolutely perfect. And it works so well. And I'm really happy that I, like, every time I erased in my last sketchbook, it just smudged everywhere. And I was like, oh, please, could you just, like, stop? Because at first, I guess, like, the first few pages must have been, like, from a different sketchbook or something because they were different. Like they smudged and smeared differently. So 
I, I don't know. I don't think I'll be ever buying from that brand on my own will again, unless it's some kind of emergency and that's the only one I can afford. But um, if I can and have the possibility to, then I probably will never get that sketchbook again. Um, so I didn't realize this until after I finished the drawing, but she's really Ramona Flowers from um, Scott Pilgrim, if you're not familiar with it. Um, but she really reads that energy and I didn't realize it until I finished this. I was like, oh shoot, kind of looks a little too much like her, but I'm glad I didn't go with short hair and went with a ponytail instead. But, um, so yeah, if you were like looking at this and wondering, hey, is this like some kind of fan art for it or something, which you probably weren't, but, um, if you were, then, uh, no, it didn't mean to be, but it kind of was accidentally. I do like the movie. I, it's like nothing to the movie. It's literally just, er, well, I haven't read the comics yet. I've just watched the actual movie. I love the movie. I, it just was like an unintentional kind of fan art. Not really though. So initially with the dark color, me back again with uh, talking about the actual art, I was actually considering doing a more pastel green because I figured it would fit much better with the actual illustration, but I decided that I wanted to go with my initial idea and have a very dark dominant tone. And so when I lay down this color at first, it may look a little blue green, but when it dries, it's not blue green. It is like a very dark green. And I really like that I kept that special contrast in because it really helps push everything in the actual illustration for the cover. And I, I did notice though, while I lay down the pink for the watermelon, that the actual line art bled a little bit, which I need to remember to do that after I have colored the illustration. Although I, I did it because it was part of the actual design in the illustration. So I wanted it to be like, you know, particularly placed. So if I redraw this image for the very back one, I'll just have to remember to draw the full watermelon first and then ink it and then add in all the special details like the seeds, the little line, the hearts, you know, whatever, and that kind of stuff. So, hi. Let's catch up a little bit. If you are disinterested in actually learning a little more about my personal life and what's been going on or anything, then um, yeah, you can click off. Goodbye, see you later. Um, so right before filming this, a little warning real quick, spider related. Um, I'm gonna put a picture up in a second, but um, while I was going to the bathroom right before the recording, my cat was sitting on the counter his name is Wilson, and he looks up toward the ceiling, and he keeps looking up there, and I go, Wilson, what are you looking at, key cat? And he looks back at me, and he looks back at the ceiling, and I just follow his gaze and see this lovely little thing just kind of on the ceiling. I have no fear of spiders, but this thing was massive. Where I live, spiders like this are very, very rare. I haven't seen one of these, like, big freaking spiders since I was like nine and oh my goodness it's been a long time since I've seen a spider that big and my first initial thought was hey these are where those three mysterious spider bites came from in the last two nights and uh he's deceased uh we did not want to save him because he was huge and I got two sp I got three spider bites not we're not sure if it's actually from him, from this spider. It just, it just happened to be an interesting coincidence and such. So yeah, there you go. A little bit about me. I'm not afraid of spiders. I literally have welcomed one to the shower when it was on the wall. It was like, please have, have a little drop. And I like popped a drop on the wall, you know, so it wouldn't hit the spider, but like just would kind of run down it. So yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I love spiders, but geez, this was a massive guy. Um, so yeah, shameful plug time. If you want to support me anywhere else beside YouTube, if you want to, you don't have to, no pressure or anything, or you just want to look at some interesting art that isn't on my channel, you can follow me at Nibs the Sketching on Pinterest, or just check me out if you want. No pressure, you do not have to, but if you'd like, you are totally welcome to. I like to post things that I don't post on YouTube on there or have shared with my YouTube audience that is free to save. 
So yeah, I'll see you later and have a nice day. Goodbye.